Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Physics Surgery. Uh, we are here to investigate a very important concept in rotating frames of reference. We'll try in this video to differentiate between uh, relative velocity of a body with respect to a point and relative velocity of a body with respect to an observer. What is the prime difference between taking a frame attached to a point and taking a frame attached to an observer. That's the main agenda. So you could see that we'll try to also investigate a famous formula that is there in most of our chapters of translatory frames, right? VAB, well, velocity of A with respect to B is equal to velocity of A minus velocity of B, of course, a vector relation. Is that always applicable? Is it correct or incorrect? That is what the agenda is going to be, okay, right? So let's try to move on to the formal wording of the question. Yeah, this is the question I made for you. And let me go through the question very quickly for you. So you can see that there is a rod uh, which is rotating about its end, right? Left end, this one, right? With an angular velocity omega. And there is a block or a particle, you can call it. So I drawn it slightly bigger so that you can visualize it of mass m, which is attached to the end of the rod. And the length of the rod is L, as you could see clearly marked, and it rotates in a circular motion with an angular velocity of omega, right? It's a uniform angular velocity. And an observer P, so this P is not a point, he's an observer. Just imagine this is kind of having a seat and observer is trapped to that seat at that place, trying to face this small m, okay? So he's an observer rigidly fixed on the rod at a distance L by two from, the, so, right? Uh, so from the particular point, okay? So it's somewhere around the middle, it is there. So in the frame of reference P, he, he's asking, like, uh, choose, uh, asking us to choose the correct option among the four, okay? So uh, more than one may be correct answer. So we are supposed to judge each option on its own merit. So let me read out the options for you. Velocity of M. So remember all the four options we are trying to manipulate in the frame of observer P who is rigidly fixed, okay? So velocity of M, he observes is zero, first option. Acceleration of M, he observes is L by two, which is this distance, omega square. Pseudo force that he observes on M is M into L by two omega square. And again, the option D, pseudo force on M is M into L into omega square, okay, right? So you want to give it a try right i'll just you just need to pause the video here and then after giving a fair try just move on to the next part where i'll explain the solution okay right so here we go uh, before we try doing this let's try to take a simple concept which i have pre-drawn here okay i've just borrowed the diagram into this page the concept that i'm talking about especially velocity of a can you see here velocity of a with respect to a reference frame b remember with b is a rotating frame or the observer uh, whose head is rotating. Imagine if a person P here sits and is moving, not only he's moving or translating, his head actually rotates with an angular velocity omega as he's watching this M. So under that circumstance, the velocity of A with respect to B, B is an observer here, is not merely VA minus VB, but there will be an extra term that will come into picture. Remember this extra term would be absent if the observer B was purely translating, okay? So that's why the first bracket would be the formula, which is a special case of B being a translatory frame, okay? Now, this looks like a very tough formula. So I'll just given you the formula, but in this solution, we'll try our best to visualize this formula. I'm not going to directly use this formula, okay? Right, uh, so in order to emphasize that, I've created a simple situation here in white. Can you see this, right? This entire thing. I've created a completely new problem so that we can discuss and borrow whatever we visualize into this problem, okay? So I hope you are with me now. So I'm assuming a block, right? You can see a block of mass m having a general velocity with respect to a rest frame, a ground frame. So this white arrow represents its velocity vector as seen by a ground observer or a rest frame, okay? Right, absolute velocity. Now let's suppose in each of the three cases, three different observers watch this block block okay right so we are supposed to now analyze what kind of uh, velocity for this particular block each of these three observers are going to see okay now the first observer is uh, this is a diagram for i okay so i've just tried <laughs> and so this observer as you could see i've drawn an eye here he's moving or just translating just imagine he's just moving from one place to another place without turning his head Right, his head is still, it's just translating in space. This red arrow represents its velocity. Now, in this case, the VA minus VB formula on the top, can you see? 
that would be applicable there won't be any second term this kind of observer is called a translating frame of reference okay right now this observer apart from seeing this velocity he will have to subtract this velocity from here so what he's going to see i'll just draw it for you apart from that white arrow he will be able to see a red arrow which is in reverse okay so what essentially i am drawing is i am negating the velocity of the observer and adding it to the absolute so can i say this white vector represents va and this red in invert represents the minus vb so this is the uh, so uh, if you ask this guy what is the resultant velocity that he is going to see it would be the vector sum of va and minus vb va and minus vb okay so now we are done with the first case in the second case you could see a person sits at a place okay so he is not moving but his head is turning okay right it is just seen by an angular velocity let's say omega you can just replicate this by sitting in the chair where you are watching or stand still where you are watching this video and just turn your head about yourself okay so when you turn your head all the objects in front of you go in the reverse direction okay right so and the farther objects move faster and the closer objects move slower okay the idea is very simple so if i join a line from the observer can you see just watch there right can you see a blue line that i have drawn imagine this distance is x okay right and if this rotational velocity is omega let me mark that rotational velocity as omega then any object which is being watched by this fellow would be felt as if it's going in the reverse direction so you can you see if this person is turning like this then the object seems to be moved like this in your case when you are watching this particular thing on a mobile or a computer screen just turn your head towards your left then the mobile screen seems to move towards right and vice versa okay so this blue arrow i can write it as x times of omega so you can see this is x omega that should be in reverse direction so if someone asks you what would be the resultant velocity as seen by this observer he would say apart from the absolute velocity i have to negate a value called as x omega okay right and now i'll take a case 3 in which superposition of 1 and 2 happens so this observer is having both translational velocity and also his head is rotating like this right in that scenario he would get both the result of a red arrow you could see the red arrow is subtracted and also a blue arrow in reverse has been subtracted these two individual arrows represent the terms in this above formula okay so this negative red arrow is the reason for writing minus vb and this negative blue arrow is the reason for this entire term which is omega cross rba okay omega cross rba you could see i have reversed this ba because it would be moving in the reverse direction so i'll borrow this aspect instead of using this formula i'll borrow this case 3 aspect and say this rotating observer who is watching this mass m should be able to uh, be considered like a case 3 okay so i'll try my best to draw an observer there i can't use a white picture so i'll draw a red colored observer now so imagine there is a human eye there watching that small m and you realize that this i is not only having a translational velocity you know that in circular motion this would have a translational velocity of l by 2 into omega right because it's at a distance of l by 2 from this so this one's circular motion would be of radius l by 2 therefore this one's translational velocity would be simply l by 2 into omega not just that his eyes would be rotating like this just like in the case 3 with an angular velocity omega okay what is the absolute velocity of uh, mass m absolute velocity of mass m in this direction in this direction would be l omega so let me manipulate that here the diagram i'll i'll draw it here okay so let's say this is your block m that i am talking about right and it has its absolute velocity in this direction which is l omega because it's at a distance of that circular motion so and then because of this observer that i drew there who is at a distance of l by 2 from here he has a translational velocity of l by 2 omega and that has to be reversed right so this translational velocity has to be reversed and added here so that would be reversed and added which is l by 2 omega and there is a rotational velocity also right which i'll try to draw it in a 
different color okay so let's let maybe i'll draw it as blue color and due to this blue color rotation you would have a negative vector which should be in this direction equal to the distance between the two which is again unfortunately l by 2 so i have to write an l by 2 here i wrote x omega can you see in the case 2 so this would be l by 2 into omega right so this would be l by 2 into omega so if if you ask this guy he would say that i i see the result of all this which in this particular problem you could see is vector sum of a zero okay so velocity of uh, that block m with respect to that observer p would be equal to zero and this is very very uh, visual for you also just imagine you don't know any of this physics you are imagining a rod or a merry go round in which there is a radial rod kind of thing there are two seats here you and your friend are facing each other right and you are closer to the axis of rotation and your friend is farther away and when the merry go round rotates and when you are facing each other the velocity of one with respect to two is always a zero you'll feel that you are always facing each other and that's what this concept is trying to tell which we found using the laws of physics okay so in rotating frames just writing vab is equal to va minus vb is a wrong concept okay so you need to consider even the second term that i illustrated in case 2 and applied it here okay so we'll go back to the question and ask ourselves i think this either by visual analysis or by physics you should all appreciate that the velocity of mass m with respect to an observer not a point if i had said a point point won't rotate right so once the word observer in the question is used you have to use this concept so as seen by an observer at p the body m would be having no velocity so option a is a correct answer now um for acceleration i can i can do it in two ways okay so the acceleration part rigorous physics wise you could you have velocity in relative frame okay right maybe you'll differentiate this with respect to time and you'll get lot of terms and you'll name each one of those and you start getting the acceleration that's one way you'll find them in the standard books let's do it in again visual manner okay uh, what did i say i said when you do this merry go round experiment as seen by you your friend will always be at rest this rest is complete rest so once it is completely rest the net acceleration seen by you of him also should be zero okay so the acceleration as seen by you of him should be zero so acceleration of m as seen by observer p this is a wrong option this is not a correct answer here right so l by 2 omega so this should have been a zero okay so the b is a wrong answer and a is the correct one okay right let's go to c now in c the pseudo force on m you are supposed to calculate okay uh, let's try to understand what does pseudo force mean the pseudo force is the fictitious force that the observer in rotating frame has to put on the block in order to explain uh, the motion of that block okay what is the actual motion of the block actual motion of block or particle m right we saw it's in circular motion right so it will be in a circular motion like this with this as the center okay so this is the center right what is the radius of that circular motion radius of that circular motion is we know l right right so uh, this is the actual motion so in order that this actual motion takes place we all know in uniform circular motion there should be a centripetal force or a force uh, which is towards the center right so that towards the center force i should be able to mark right so remember this is a real force okay and in this case the rod provides that force rod is in contact with the block m right so this real force is m into l into omega square okay now as seen by an observer right as seen by an observer let me draw that observer at the middle you can see the red colored eye here so that observer he should complain that this block seems to be at rest okay right so apart from this real force he should visualize some other force in order to ensure that this block stays at rest because he sees it at rest he is desperate to explain that this is at rest which he cannot if he takes this as the only force acting so he will say so i'll just okay so this fellow he says block m is at rest 
so he has to believe it is at rest so he would say there is a false force right it doesn't really exist in his frame he has to make it exist right so he'll believe it exists and he says there is a force in this reverse direction and how much is should be that force according to this uh, thing right whatever is the real force it should be cancelled off in his frame of reference so this he says is the pseudo force and okay so the value of the pseudo force is not m into l by 2 into omega square so please don't it's a misconception that if you have a distance l by 2 here then the pseudo force should be in this direction equal to m l by 2 omega square no pseudo force should be that force which ensures in this problem that the net force on this comes out to be zero as seen by this guy then only he will come he he will be able to explain that the block is at rest right if you had written l by 2 here then there won't be any cancellation right so that's the reason why you go back to the options and you could see the examiner has given the options in a very shrewd manner answer c is wrong okay and d would be the correct answer okay right so that's the beauty of this question where your distance between these two won't matter okay even if now you get a idea right even if this observer is not here elsewhere i think real force won't change and therefore the pseudo force as seen by any observer placed anywhere here would be still ml omega square right it is not equal to m into distance between the block and the observer omega square that's wrong okay so now that i have impressed upon some ideas in this this is not the end of it so for the next video on rotation right i've just taken the reference of the same diagram try to answer some important questions here okay there's another name that i have written here a commonly asked question what is the centrifugal force on mass m with respect to observer p right i've already discussed the word pseudo force now let's try to understand you'd see that if i had differentiated this velocity equation you'll this will spit out lot of acceleration terms each of those acceleration terms would be named okay and one of the terms that you will get from that naming is this centrifugal force okay is it really the total pseudo force or is it a component of pseudo force that we'll answer in the next video okay so that's that's something that we want to uh, answer here right so what is the centrifugal force on small m as seen by observer at p not the point observer at p second important term that would be a part of that uh, acceleration dif uh, after differentiation is coriolis force what is the coriolis force on m with respect to observer p okay right so 